Hare Krishna. So we're ending the day on a peaceful note. Um, Mukarai is a is a village not so far from Radhakund. It is the place where Radharani's uh, grandmother came from. That is to say, the grandmother from uh, from the site of her uh, of her in-laws. So therefore, there was there was some suspicion sometimes because we know that in Yavat, the house where Radharani stayed after she was married, her in-laws were very strict with her, and Mukara also, and adds to that. Um, like on one occasion, it is described that somehow or other in the night, rather in Krishna's cloth became changed. So Radharani in the morning woke up in yellow cloth instead of dark blue. So Mukara came in and said, what is this wearing this, this yellow cloth? And then Lalita very quickly had to straighten it out and said, this old lady is going blind. The sun is shining on the blue cloth and she thinks it's yellow. <laughs> Just like, you know, in this way, she tried to cover it up really quick. And then later in the day, Danista, who is a servant, a maidservant of Krishna, she was quickly uh, coming to exchange the cloth and everything was all right. So such things are described uh, and it is all part of this parakya ras because when we're speaking about Radha and Krishna, there is a relationship of parakya uh, and parakya, I mentioned it in more kutir already, Parakya are the stolen moments, right? Nothing can be taken for granted. Parakya means that uh, that <coughs> we can uh, we have to earn Krishna's mercy again and again. Um, of course, Krishna's mercy is costless, so it is said. So why we have to earn Krishna's mercy when Krishna's mercy is costless? Huh? But that is a fact. Krishna's mercy is costless and everyone, everyone is getting Krishna's mercy regardless. Huh? No one is exempt. Krishna's mercy is everywhere and reaching any, everyone and everyone. Even Kamsa. Uh, even Kamsa somehow or other was thinking of Krishna, although not in a favorable way, but even Kamsa could not escape. Even Kamsa, when he heard, uh, what, what will this Krishna do to me? What can he do to me? Uh, I'm Kamsa, I have very powerful, powerful allies. Yes, so what can Krishna do to me? Then someone, I have Casey. No one can stand up against Casey. Then, moments later, some messenger comes to the court and says, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, a calamity, a calamity, what, 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 what? what? Casey, no, no, yeah, yeah. Your Majesty, Casey is dead. He's too powerful. It's just incredible, he's too powerful. I mean, what can we do here? Nothing, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? Maybe I should just surrender to him. Now, how can I do that? What will people say? Me, Kamsa, surrendering to Krishna. No, I can't do that. Then, let me go to Vindavan and torture the residents of Vindavan. But how can I leave the palace when I'm too afraid to go out? So I call this Kamsa's moment of doubt, where Kamsa had, like, for one moment, he thought, maybe I should surrender to Krishna. Then his false ego got in between, just like ours also gets always in between. Let me surrender to Krishna. Nah, how could I do that? All of, you know, all of my friends say, you know, imagine, you know, suddenly I become too Krishna conscious. No, no, no. What would my family think of me? What? Uh, some false ego comes in between. Uh, so, 
We are here. When Radha and Krishna were performing their pastimes in Vrindavan, Radhakund and Shamakund were very private places, huh? very unlike the present, where they are totally public places to a point where they're a little too public, if you ask me. Right? Too much public places. And that's why I needed to come to a quiet place to end the day, to sort of close, you know, all the external covering that was there in Radhakund. Radhakund was at the time of Krishna and in the past times of Krishna is a private place. It is a hidden place. It is not like everybody knows, right? Rather these are, you know, not everybody knows, oh these are the places where they meet. No, obviously not. They were trying to hide their meetings. So Radhakund carried that very hidden covered identity which now of course is lost um, but we can appreciate that um, for a moment that it is like that um, that actually <coughs> after the material covering is gone that we're really dealing with a a peaceful a private place We discussed many things there, um, read from the Kovinda Lilamrita, written by Krishidas Kaviraj Goswami. We went to the place where he wrote that literature. He actually got that title, Kaviraj, King of Poets, for writing the Govinda Lilamrita. Mm -hmm. And later then, he wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, Govinda Lilamrita is a little high literature but it describes though how how the eternal world functions hmm? and how everything is centered centered around Krishna and how everyone is aiming to increase increase the um, the attraction the love between Radha and Krishna like Mukara as as a, as a grandmother who sometimes becomes an obstacle is only increasing the the hankering huh? so we also get some obstacles huh? it was so peaceful until that loudspeaker started um, so, but some obstacles will be there. It's peaceful again for a moment. That's good. Yeah, so... But not for too long. <laughs> it is difficult in this age huh, to find anywhere any peace. And we're finding that. As we're practicing spiritual life, we're finding that it is difficult to find the peace of mind, you know, to chant the peace, a peaceful situation. Huh? We all have to worry too much. You know, how to live? Huh? Where to make the money? Everything they charge for everything and anything. Huh? Previously. It is said that the brahmacharis, the vanaprastas and the sannyasis, they were all living from charity. And only the uh, grihastas, they were making some money or some produce. And they were producing. <coughs> Everyone else was just sort of living from charity. Um, we are uh, now living in such a world that right? pay as you go every step of the way okay? where get your money it creates that stress on all of us how to how to manage it that is called alap 
long drawn out notes. <laughs> Stay on one syllable for 25 seconds. <laughs> thinking that when we go to a place like Radhakund, we are meant to have a very internal experience. Eh? It is meant to, I mean, how would it be if we could just go there and quietly sit and meditate? Eh? And, and sort of think about not just meditate on, on Ras Lila and on Krishna's pastimes, um, but meditate on our, on our own situation also, where we are, how far we are from, from being there, but also appreciating that we are part of the Sankirtan movement, which takes us there, right? somehow or other. Although we have no previous Adhikar, no previous qualification, but the Sankrata movement is so powerful, it takes us there. It took us here, um, took us this far. Um, guitar solo. <laughs> Amazing. our influence it goes both ways you can see the influence of of Vrindavan has reached us but unfortunately the influence of the West has also reached Vrindavan <laughs> it's a two-way exchange you know? I came here I came here um, 41 years ago and it was very very difficult different very different uh, three cars in a day. Only in all of Vrindavan, three cars. That's all. You would see maximum three cars in one day. The cars, the roads were all very small because, and just horse carts, and some bicycles. Uh, not very few motorbikes. People didn't have money for that. You know, people didn't live like that. Life was very simple. Huh? Even in Vrindavan itself, electricity was something symbolic. Right? You had the lines, the electric lines, and that was a sign of your status, you know, that we actually have electricity. Most of the time it didn't work. Right? <laughs> but we had electricity because we had the lines. So we were totally ready for a life without electricity. Right? Take your water from the well, and instead of from the tap, I have my candles. I had one of those candle stands where you could put five candles at the same time so that I could read nicely. I was totally prepared, you know, like somehow or other for a life without electricity. And it was a nice life because there was no awaj. I don't know if you've seen the trucks in India, but on the back of the trucks it is written awaj karo. I don't know if you know what awaj karo means, but it means make noise. <laughs> well, that they know how to do in India. <laughs> they know how to make noise. It's impressive. So today, um, when we went to Radhakund, um, We couldn't fully uh, spend our time in meditation and that's why I wanted to sort of close our day here in this place so that we could uh, think a little bit, although that loudspeaker 
wasn't there last time I came. <laughs> Krishna Pyar, love for Krishna. So. Love for Krishna is difficult to attain, um, as we are all experiencing. Love to an extent, yes. Um, we could not, maybe when we say, do you have taste for chanting Hare Krishna, if I ask the question, some might say, well, I don't know. But if I would, but if we would say, tomorrow you're not allowed to chant Hare Krishna. Could you do it? Could we? Uh, we can think about, oh, I have to chant these 16 rounds. But what if we would make a rule, tomorrow no one is allowed to chant Hare Krishna. We would all break that rule. We'd say, you know, stuff you with your rule, you know. <laughs> We would be, we would rebel, right? and we would chant anyway, right? because that's not possible. We cannot spend one day not chanting Hare Krishna. That's no longer possible. So, in this way, our attachment to the chanting has actually developed much more than we realize, than we sometimes think. Right? We tell you, you know, sometimes we wonder, am I a devotee? Right? Am I actually a devotee? Try one day not to be a devotee. No? I didn't mean that seriously, okay? <laughs> no, it's not an instruction. <laughs> oh, my voice. Uh, please stop the noise. <laughs> Let the electricity go out. <laughs> Somehow or other. Um, when we meditate on Krishna's exalted pastimes, then we should keep in mind that we must approach such pastimes with honesty. Honesty about our own position. As soon as we start to imagine that we are more exalted than we are, then we cannot approach the pastimes of Krishna. Then we make it cheap. Huh? So, a Vaishnav quality is humility, and humility and honesty go together because, see, when you're honest, you realize, well, I guess I'm not God. Yeah? Honestly speaking, I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not the Almighty. I mean, I guess, I have to admit that. And then we have to, the next stage is, maybe I'm not perfect then. Maybe I have some faults. And then, maybe I should write them down. Three days later, cramp into your hand from all the, from the list, and there's no end to it. And we start writing down our faults. So honesty helps when we realize our own shortcomings. No? That is humility. Uh, so humility and honesty are actually pretty much almost synonymous. So in that mood of honesty, in that mood of simplicity, and we can approach carefully, with respect, these pastimes of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. Then we can actually say, well, I'm not qualified, but by the mercy of Mahaprabhu, I know about these things. By all this mercy, I am now here. And now I can, for a moment, think about these things. Because this is the goal. This is the spiritual world. That's what it's about. Huh? There are these eternal pastimes. So it's not, well, this is not for us. This is too advanced. No, 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 no. It's not too advanced. Some things may, but we should also understand this. But hand in hand with that honesty. Hmm? So... In this way, I came here not to open a huge, huge discussion. I came here to close the day. That was the idea. And 
I just want to recap one more time with the nice background music. Um, <laughs> you don't get that every day, you know. <laughs> we are the lucky ones. Um, I spoke from Srila Prabhupada's Nectar of Instruction, which told us that those who reside on the banks of Radha Kund are the most fortunate. Prabhupada also said, in a spiritual body, also said there. Mm. So how are we looking at that? It means that we internally fully realize right. our eternal identity. Then <coughs> those who are like that and who reside in that place, yes, they're in the most they're the most fortunate. Um, we go there. <coughs> Although the Panda, Mohan, who is sort of the Iskon Panda, and who indeed I know for many years, <laughs> he, was, he said some good things. He said, you cannot imagine the good fortune that we have. We cannot imagine, he can also not imagine. <laughs> hmm? Who can imagine the good fortune that we have? Hmm? So we can take that with us. So we go there to collect our good fortune. Because we are poor. Hmm? We are poor. Satsarup Maharaj, who wrote so many books and did a lot of thinking also, wrote, A Poor Man Reads the Bhagavatam. That's one of his books. So that's a very good title, you know, A Poor Man Reads the Bhagavatam. I mean, that's very <laughs> profound, actually. Because, can you really, can you, we can relate to that. We are spiritually poor. Where is our Daivi Sampat? Where, where is our spiritual wealth? What do we have? What's, a, what's our credit? What's your credit with Krishna? What have we done for Krishna? What sacrifice have we made? Not so much. Thin, thin. Have we ever chanted really good rounds? I don't know. Are you sure? Maybe? Sometimes? Uh, maybe not. Uh, did you ever chant one good mantra yet? Uh, did, did we ever chant one mantra with love? Are you sure? With love? Real love? Praying? Yeah, one mantra. Ami Jani na. No, I don't know. Ami Jani. I don't know if we ever chanted one good mantra. But anyway, so our credit is meager. Our offerings are not many. Um, but we are here. So we come. We are here in Vrindavan to collect some spiritual fortune. Huh? That's why we came, something to take back, some, some spiritual fortune, something that will give us a little bit more strength in our chanting, in our absorption in the Bhagavatam, something that will help us a little more to overcome our material desires, uh, which usually bother us like flies, uh, buzzing around, and coming back. Material desires like flies. We need a tail, right? <laughs> uh, to somehow or other deal with all these flies, right? That would be a good... Sur animals have a tail to deal with flies. Huh? And since we are two-legged animals, we need a tail. That would help. So many material desires. Mm. So, okay. Therefore, we have a tail. We have a sika. And the ladies, they have a braid, you know? See? We have a tail. That tail, if you don't have a tail, you're in trouble. <laughs> and then the flies will get you. Yeah. What they do? Need a tail. I've got a mini tail. 
<laughs> it doesn't want to grow. <laughs> what to do? Anyhow, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that we somehow or other um, need more spiritual strength. So, this coming to Vrindavan is for that. Huh? Going to these places is for collecting mercy, for creating sanskaras, impressions, huh? impressions. These rich bosses, we heard from the panda, he's saying rich bossy, rich bossy, rich bossy, you must give to rich bossy, this, that, okay. But one thing we can say about the rich bossies, they live with Krishna. They do live with Krishna. Although in this age some, some monetary uh, interest may have entered there, but they live with Krishna. There's no doubt about it. Huh? <coughs> so let us somehow or other take this with us from our Parikrama day, day in, day out huh? for the next couple of days. If you came only for the day, try and come for another day. Because the momentum has to set in, you know. It's like, uh, if you have something that's very dirty, you soak it for a while. <laughs> yeah? You soak it and then maybe brush it a bit, you can beat it on a stone. Yeah? It takes some effort. So, by doing day in, day out, this kind of parikamas, after, at the end, you really feel like, oh, Something happened to me. Whew, that was uh, that was just a good dose of something, something transcendental. And that's the idea. Well, that's what we're doing. We're trying to get a substantial dose. Like recently, I was in Mauritius, and we had a substantial dose of kirtan, lots of kirtan. And I came, and after that, I was still. I went to Australia and I was riding on the wave of that kirtan that we did. It is like this. Hmm. The after effect. So that is what we require. The after effect. We are not ready to really live at Radekund and be there in that internal mood, eh? like the Antaranga Seva, serving in our spiritual identity. Who are we? Who is a gopi? Who is a coward boy? Do you know? Huh? Sometimes we wonder, does some of the spiritual identity manifest in the material identity? Like let's say, if someone has a very strong character, does that mean they are left wing? Right wing is more submissive, and left wing. So is that is that something of the eternal nature coming to, or will we be rebellious now in this life and totally submissive in the next life? I think if I had the next life, I would still be rebellious. <laughs> I think so. But probably was rebellious in my last life as well. And many lives before. But does something from the spiritual nature comes through in our material nature? Maybe at one point when we become very advanced it begins to become uncovered. Hmm? But now we don't know. Huh? I mean Advaita Simba might be a gopi and that that some of the ladies might be coward boys who knows these things huh? <laughs> might be may not be <laughs> you could also be a cow everybody's telling me i'm a cow, I'm a cow. Huh? everybody's telling me i'm a cow yeah so <laughs> maybe you would be a cow 
My Carmi name, the initial is P and the last name is Cock, so Peacock. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, what to do? <laughs> Maybe that's a giveaway, you know? <laughs> yeah, who knows? But we can only speculate about our spiritual identity at this stage. Right? So, we are outsiders. Because we don't know our eternal spiritual identity, we are outsiders. Didn't I say yesterday Uddhava was an outsider? And we are behind Uddhava as outsiders. And why are we outsiders? Because we don't know our eternal identity. So how can we really penetrate in this mysterious Vrindavan? Where there's this double world, you know? It's what we see here and what we hear right now, and then What's behind it? When we saw the Radhakund with our eyes, and when we saw the Radhakund to Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami's eyes, it was a different Radhakund, no? So, so with these meditations, I think we're going back to, to Vrindavan, and start eat something, digest, Digest the prasadam, digest the experience and the thoughts of the day. And then tomorrow, where do we go tomorrow? So look, huh? Are we going to Vrindakun tomorrow? Oh. Okay, so that's Vrindakun then. So I want to go to Vrindakun, to Pavansaravar, and to Motikun. But I've never been to Motikun, so. I'll send an advance party to find it because I don't know where it is, you know. But it's a nice story. The Mukta Charita, the planting of the pearls. That's where it is. Huh? So it's a nice place to go. I want to go there to the pearl planting place. So looking forward to tomorrow, to your association once again. If you haven't booked yet, there might still be a few places in the bus. Um, the devotees handling the bookings, they have their office on the staircase there. See? <laughs> and you can just, they're sitting there, and you can just go there and make your bookings. Anytime. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vinda Ki Jai All glory studio assembled devotees. Kona is the Navakana Swami Ki.